When you're thinking about regenerative, when you're thinking about managing and um, designing actually your whole farm with a regenerative approach, you're thinking about every single system as a linked system. So you're thinking about putting in hedgerows and you're thinking about how you're managing your stock and you're thinking about grasslands and you're thinking about biodiversity. And so when you have a regenerative outlook, you're, you're not thinking about things in isolation. You're thinking about things as, as a whole holistic concept. If you came to the farm, you'd see um, we have um, a herd of Belter Galloway cows um, who are currently like grazing on the um, hilltops. And uh, we have native breed pigs. At the moment, we've got a mixture of Berkshire pigs, Saddlebacks and Tamworths. And we've got a load of uh, native breed chickens um, for exiting. Our outlook when we first took on the farm um, was to farm totally alongside nature. So our... Um, our sort of vision for the estate was like nature first and then we sort of built our farming model around what would work um, to um, enhance sort of um, soil health and biodiversity in this landscape. So um, this piece that we've taken on was sort of conventionally managed for the last like 50, 60 years. Um, and so we, we felt really strongly that we wanted to totally do a sort of full stop on um, pesticides and um, herbicide use and just go straight to um, managing the farm sort of holistically um, and yeah sort of really built our model around um, sort of a nature first approach. We've been practicing with mob grazing we haven't got it totally perfect yet um, We there's lots of limitations that we found to mob grazing when we we're first starting out so um, so mob grazing is um, where you um, bring your cattle into a tight mob together and you keep them together using electric fencing and mobile in infrastructure. And then um, you move them on like regularly. So a lot of people call it uh, like adaptive plan grazing. So you can be a little bit flexible with it. So it's not like you move them every single day or every three days. You sort of go with the seasons and how quickly the grass is growing or not growing. And... Um, and it's a fantastic system. We've had really good results with it, but we're sort of really limited at the moment by um, infrastructure. So mob grazing takes a huge amount of infrastructure, like water infrastructure and um, like fencing, which all costs a lot of money. So we've only got a, like a finite amount at the moment. So um, that sort of limited us to how well we can do our mob grazing. Um, but the, the bits that we have done and... Um, so sort of the impact that we've seen has been really, really positive. And we're using mob grazing in, in a slightly different way in that we're using doing long grass grazing. Um, so throughout the summer months, we're trying to keep our grasses long because um, when grasses are long, roots are also long. So on grass plants, roots are as long as the tops. Um, so when your grasses are long, um, you've got all that root mass, which is absorbing, carb uh, absorbing carbon dioxide and feeding plant roots and feeding all things below the soil. And... Um, you're getting maximum photosynthesis. And um, and so that's sort of one reason for um, keeping those grasses long. But also from a biodiversity perspective, there's so much habitat. Like when you go out into our fields and the grass is short, you can hardly hear a thing. And then you go out and the grass is long and you can just hear like a uh, sort of hubbub of activity um, in amongst the grasses. Raising cows in the way that we are um, can mitigate climate change because when those cows are being managed properly, or say properly well, um, those cows can draw down a huge amount of carbon into our soils. So, so rather than um, thinking about it like cows are doing all these bad things, you can think about it as a as a circular system. And so, um, and even from just a land management perspective, when you're thinking about regenerative, when you're thinking about managing and um, designing actually your whole farm with a regenerative approach you're thinking about every single system as a linked system so you're thinking about putting in hedgerows and you're thinking about how you're managing your stock and you're thinking about grasslands and you're thinking about biodiversity and so when you have a regenerative outlook you're you're not thinking about things in isolation you're thinking about things as as a whole holistic concept and so um i think that i think it's really Regenerative is abandoned around a lot at the moment. It's a real good buzzword, um, but we have to sort of nail down exactly what it means. And and I, and I think it does mean farming for climate as well as farming for animal health and biodiversity and all these other things. Um, but we have to decide exactly what that looks like, especially from an arable perspective. I think it's it's um, it's getting 
our farming practices right to be, have the effect that we want to have from a climate perspective. One of the main things that we found a struggle to so far is that a lot of the um, kind of government grants and things available for either um, diversification on your farm or um, just like helping. There's a few grants available for like helping new entry farmers and that sort of thing. But they're all for too much money. <laughs> like all the pieces of kit that they say that you can buy are all like, bear in mind that you have to come up with 60% often of the capital. Um, it's like a £60,000 piece of kit. And so when you're just starting out and we're starting out on literally a shoestring, um, they need to think about like really small scale producers and and young farmers who haven't come from farming backgrounds and don't necessarily have access to these big lumps of cash. A key thing that government could think about is offering yeah, smaller producers smaller amounts of money for, for, especially for things that give exactly the aims and objectives that the government want in terms of doing mob grazing. I and mean, it's fantastic for everyone, but it's also even fantastic for the local water board and um, government's climate targets and all these sorts of things. So it's really something that we should be able to get funding for.